now we are starting with microsporogenesis. Come back to tetragonal structure of anther. At each corner, microsporangium is there, which is filled with compactly arranged. homogeneous cells known as sporogenous tissue. Each microsporangium is filled with compactly arranged homogeneous cells known as sporogenous tissue. Each uh, cell of the sporogenous tissue is able to form the microspore. So each cell of microsporangium will act as PNC, that is pollen mother cell, which will undergo meiosis. Which will undergo meiosis and it will give rise to microspore tetrad. The ploidy of this PNC is 2N, it is diploid, while microspore tetrad is N. When the young anther is there, then they are in the form of, they will undergo, PNC will undergo meiosis and form microspore tetras. When the anther is mature, then this microspore tetrad will separate or will dissociate from each other and form the microspores. On maturity, they will form the microspores. When this formation will occur, then it is known as the microsporangium is known as pollen sac. Let me then the term uses pollen sac. Now the pollen sac will break down. This wall will break from here, which is known as dehiscence of the anther, and all the pollens will release out. Once again, we are starting with microsporogenesis. It is a process in which PNC, pollen mother cell, will form a microspore through meiosis. Once again, it is a process in which PNC will form microspore through the process of meiosis. PNC will undergo meiosis and microspore tetrad will form. Firstly, they are not separate. But later on, on maturity, these walls will dissociate from each other and they will form microspores. They are thousands in number and when the wall of the sporangium will break down, they are released out through the dehiscence of the anther. Now we are coming to the structure of the pollen grain. Each pollen grain, after separation, the microspore is known as pollen grain and structure of pollen grain, it is a round structure which is surrounded by plasma membrane. The inner wall is known as intine, which is made up of this is intine and made up of cellulose and pectin. This is intine and made up of cellulose and pectin. While the outermost layer is known as exine, which is thick and it is not uniform even. It is ornamented and different in different species. Then it is interrupted. It is not uniform. It is interrupted at places with the help of a thin layer, thin wall, where the wall is thin, which is known as germ pore. This is in time and outermost is excite.
this is coral reef. The innermost plasma membrane. The next is intine, which is made up of cellulose and parthenium. It is also thin. While the outermost is exine, which is made up of a chemical substance known as sporopollenin. And this sporopollenin is formed from the tapetum layer. Sporopollenin. This sporopollenin is resistant to pH as well as acid action. Even it is resistant to enzyme. That is why pollen grains can be preserved as fossils and they can remain for years as such without destroying. Now, uh, when the pollen grains are released during pollination, they are either at the two cell stage or three cell stage. What do you mean by two cell stage? The nucleus now will undergo mitosis. And what will happen? It will have unequal mitotic division and a smaller pyramid like swing smaller cell will form which is which remain floating in the cytoplasm of the bigger cell. It is known as vegetative cell. It is also known as tube cell. It doesn't participate in reproduction. While The smaller one is known as generative cell. In 60% of the angiosperms, the pollen grain is released at six, uh, two cell stage. While remaining 40%, they will have three cell stage. What happens in three cell stage? Then the generative cell will again divide. And it will have two cells. And these two cells are known as male gametes. But it is only in the cases of 40%. In the case of 40% of angiosperms, while 60% are having the same, they are having a small generative cell and a larger vegetative cell. Again, I am coming back to pollen grain structure. It is plasma membrane, intine and exine. Exile layer is very very important. Normally asked in the exam what is sporopollenin and what is its role. It is resistant to pH, acid action and enzyme action. That is why it can be preserved as fossils and we can store them in pollen banks. Now we are coming to the importance of or the effect of influence of pollen grains on the human population. Pollen grains can be used as supplement. can be used as supplements. They are not a substitute, they are supplements. Supplement means which are given along with the normal diet. They will they are normally given to the athletes or to the race courses for increasing their performances. They are available in tablets or syrups. Second point is, they may produce allergies in human beings, bronchitis or various other respiratory disorders. The most common example which produces allergies is parthenium. The common name of parthenium is carrot grass. It is a wheat plant and it came with imported wheat. Difficult to control. 